May the love and peace of the Lord be with us all, as we listen to today's Gospel and Reflection. Let us now listen to the Word of God. October 19, 2023 Memorial of Saints John de Brebeuf and Isaac Joges, Priests and Companions, Martyrs A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Woe to you who build the tombs of the prophets, while it is your fathers who killed them. Clearly, you are testifying that you consent to the actions of your fathers, because even though they killed them, you build their sepulchres. Because of this also, the wisdom of God said, I will send to them prophets and apostles, and some of these they will kill or persecute, so that the blood of all the prophets, which has been shed since the foundation of the world, may be charged against this generation, from the blood of Abel, even to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the sanctuary. So I say to you, it will be required of this generation. Woe to you, experts in the law! For you have taken away the key of knowledge. You yourselves do not enter, and those who were entering, you would have prohibited. Then, while he was saying these things to them, the Pharisees and the experts in the law began to insist strongly that he restrain his mouth about many things. And waiting to ambush him, they sought something from his mouth that they might seize upon, in order to accuse him. The Gospel of the Lord Reflection How can we ensure our thoughts and actions reflect God's love and truth, rather than being driven by hostility or a desire to condemn? When Jesus left, the scribes and Pharisees began to act with hostility toward him and to interrogate him about many things, for they were plotting to catch him at something he might say. Luke 11 verses 53 to 54 Over the past few days, we have been reading St. Luke's version of Jesus' Woe to you rebukes of the scribes, Pharisees, and the scholars of the law. Today's Gospel concludes these rebukes of love by pointing out that these religious leaders did not convert. Instead, they began plotting against Jesus so as to catch him at something he might say. This is what happens when people use God's holy law as a weapon to attack. Normally, we take inspiration from the Holy Scriptures in a positive way, meaning, by reflecting upon Jesus' words and actions, and applying them to our lives. However, we can also learn from the evil others commit, and allow their actions to inspire us, to avoid their sin. In today's Gospel, we are invited to ponder the obsessive plotting of these religious leaders, so as to consider whether we also are guilty of their sin. First, note that at the conclusion of Jesus' rebukes, these religious leaders began to act with hostility toward Jesus. Normally, when we act with hostility toward another, it is done with the mind frame that we are right and they have done something wrong. We justify our hostility by pointing to their perceived sin. However, it must be understood that every act of hostility on our part is a clear indication that we have started down the road of sin and are not justified in our obsession. Notice also that these religious leaders exercised their hostility toward Jesus by interrogating him. In other words, in their anger, they kept asking him questions so as to find some fault with him. They tried to trick him and trap him with their speech using God's very law handed down through Moses and the prophets. But they manipulated that law so as to justify their hostility and out of pride to falsely accuse Jesus. Think about any times in your life in which you found yourself somewhat obsessed with what you judge to be the sin of another. Hostility in this case can even be passive, meaning you may present a kind disposition on the surface, but interiorly you are obsessively thinking about how you can condemn the person. 
Often when this happens, we can feel justified in that we convince ourselves that justice must be done, and that we are the dispensers of that justice. But if God is in control of our lives, he will not call us to obsessive plotting in regard to another. Instead, when we are following the will of God, we will sense him inspiring us to act with immediacy, calm, joy, kindness, honesty, and freedom from all anger and obsession. Reflect today upon any way that you have seen this misguided tendency within your own life. If you can identify a time when you struggled with hostility toward another, look at the fruit it bore. Was God glorified through your actions? Did this leave you at peace or agitated? Were you fully objective in your thinking? Be honest with these questions and you will begin to discover the road to freedom from such obsessive thinking. God wants you to be at peace. If there is injustice, trust that our Lord will sort it out. You, for your part, must continually work to forgive, act with charity, and direct your attention to the will of God, as it is gently presented to you. Let us pray. My patient and kind Lord, you were falsely accused and condemned by many of the religious leaders of your time, because you spoke the pure truth with love, clarity, and boldness. When I act with hostility and anger toward another, help me to turn from these sins, so that I will never condemn, never judge, and never manipulate your divine law for my own purposes. Fill me with your peace and charity alone, dear Lord. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's Gospel and Reflection. We hope that our small effort gave you a bit of inspiration as you journey your day with God. Please give us a like so this will reach to as many people as possible. Again, thank you and may God bless us all.